Good afternoon. I'm Eric Emerson. I'm director of the South Carolina Department of Archives and History, and I'm also the State Historic Preservation Officer. And I'd like to thank you for joining us today for the 2017 South Carolina Historic Preservation Awards. This year's awards are sponsored by the Office of the Governor, the Palmetto Trust for Historic Preservation, the South Carolina Archives and History Foundation, and the South Carolina Department of Archives and History. Now in their 23rd year, the Preservation Awards recognize exceptional accomplishments in the preservation, rehabilitation, and interpretation of our architectural and cultural heritage. 115 years ago, a member of the General Assembly representing Charleston County played a crucial role in the passage of legislation providing for a permanent staff member to arrange, catalog, and index the state's historical records. This act was the genesis of what would become the South Carolina Department of Archives and History and later the State Historic Preservation Office. The man responsible for that 1902 legislation was Fitz Hugh McMaster. Just over 100 years later, his great nephew, Henry D. McMaster, would commit the resources of the State Attorney General's Office to assisting the Department of Archives and History and its efforts to reclaim historically significant records that had been taken from the state's possession just prior to the burning of Columbia. For his dedication to preserving the state's records and making them available for all of the people of South Carolina, we are grateful. Since then, as both Lieutenant Governor and Governor, he has remained an avid and vocal proponent of history and historic preservation in the Palmetto State. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce the 117th Governor of South Carolina, the Honorable Henry D. McMaster. Thank you. <laughs> 117, that sounds like a lot of them, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, Dr. Emerson, I appreciate you mentioning uh, uh, the man who my father referred to as Uncle Fitz, and he said he was the finest man he, he'd ever known. And, uh, Appreciate you reminding me of that. And also, uh, my daddy, and I see Gary Pope's here, my daddy and Gary Pope's daddy and our mothers were tight friends, and both of them had roles to play in here. I know your dad, Tom, was the Speaker of the House. I believe that. And he wrote a history of Newberry County. Anyway, we, we have so many special people in the state and so much talent it's good to see it recognized like this. And I always like to look at the old buildings to see how they were constructed, and usually they're 10 times better than what we're building now. And this one that we're in now is a remarkable example of the quality of the workmanship that we have here in South Carolina. I hate to see the old buildings go. I'm gratified to see that so many of the the old ones that have stood the test of time and bring back memories to many of us. Every time we walk by them, they're like old friends. We remember what happened in them. We remember the people who built them. Remember the enterprises, the triumphs, the failures, and all. But it's all part of South Carolina life. And, and we go back to the very beginning, 1670. You remember Charlestown Landing? Founded where the Ashley and Cooper Rivers uh, converged to form the Atlantic Ocean, as they say in, in Charleston. We're very proud of ourselves, but we ought to be. This is a, it's a great community, and the, the work that, that these people do, these organizations, uh, deserves uh, much applause and thanks and appreciation. The South Carolina Archives and History Foundation, the South Carolina Department of Archives and History, and the Palmetto Trust for Historic preservation, those are the kind of entities that keep us together. Uh, we have great diversity in the state, but unified diversity held together by the, by the ties of history and commonality make us mighty strong. And that's one reason I believe that we are rising now so much in our prosperity because of things that people have built and the people who built them and are, are building more now. It's a great place to be, and it's a real honor for me to participate uh, in this ceremony today. Uh, I love history. I can't get enough of it. I wish I could remember all that I've read, but uh, I particularly am fascinated with South Carolina history and the people and their endeavors, and I don't know of another state that can come close 
to the things that we have done. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Master. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our presenter for today's awards. Uh, it's someone who spent decades preserving historic buildings in South Carolina. Uh, she's been recognized both locally and nationally for her efforts. She served as the director of the Historic Beaufort Foundation and the Preservation Society of Charleston. She's a member of the Greenville County Historic Preservation Commission and currently serves as the president of the South Carol Carolina Archives and History Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Cynthia Cole Jenkins. Hello everyone, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here with you today as we present the 2017 Historic Preservation Honor Awards. And um, we're gonna start with um, thanking every one of y'all, thanking you sir for being here, and Eric and the staff at Archives and History. They do a phenomenal job for all of us every day. Uh, before I begin, I do wanna make a note that they will be taking photos right over here um, of the award recipients with the governor. So if you'll just, when you get your award, walk right over here and wait for the governor. Today we'll start with the uh, Preservation Honor Awards, which uh, are successful and exemplary historic preservation projects around the state. And the first award is right here in Columbia. It's the auditorium, which is part of the Chappelle Administration Building at Allen University. It was designed by John Anderson Lankford, one of the nation's first licensed African-American architects. Since its construction in 1925, Chappelle Auditorium has served as a significant meeting place for well-known African-American politicians, religious leaders, and as, as well as a venue for notable artists and musicians. In 2009, Allen began an eight-year, $2.9 million project to restore the auditorium. The painstaking efforts of GMK Associates in collaboration with William Robinson of Allen University, as well as the donations and the support of many, many individuals, resulted in the beautifully restored auditorium that is now home to the Bishop Richard F. Norris Center for the Performing Arts. The recipients of the Honor Award for Chappelle Auditorium today are Mr. William S. Robinson, Vice President of Institutional Advancement at Allen University, Mr. Larry K. Register of GMK Associates, and Mr. Jerome K. Simons, Lead Architect of GMK Associates. Unfortunately, Mr. Register could not be here today, but we would ask that Mr. Robinson and Mr. Simons come to the, receive their award from the Governor. Congratulations. Yes, sir. Thank you. The next recipient of the, 20, of the 2017 Honor Award is um, Hickman Hall in Graniteville. It's located in the heart of Graniteville. It's an ornate classic revival building built in 1907. It was built both as a monument to the former owner of the Graniteville Manufacturing Company, Hamilton H. Hickman, and also as a community center for the company's employees. By 1933, the building was converted to a medical and administrative center for company personnel. It continued to serve that purpose until, 1920, until 2005, sorry, when uh, the mill ceased operations. The team responsible for the renovations of Hickman Hall demonstrated great care and accuracy in restoring the structure. Today, Hickman Hall is a stunning and gracious restoration that has returned a flagship building to community use. Receiving the award today are Ann Michael Sutzman, 
of Smith Dahlia Architects and Mr. Pete Davis of Peachtree Investment Solutions and Mr. Brad Lynch of R.W. Allen Contractors. Unfortunately, Mr. Davis and Mr. Lynch were not able to be here today, so accepting on behalf of Mr. Davis is Ms. Shannon Matlock, and accepting on behalf of Mr. Lynch is Mr. Brad Holmes. Would y'all come forward? this year goes to Holtzendorf, Holtzendorf Hall at Clemson University. It was designed by Professor Rudolph Lee in the Italian Renaissance, Renaissance style. It was constructed in 1915 to serve as the YMCA for Clemson Military College. Over time, many of the rooms were repurposed for classrooms or offices. In 2015, archival research and paint analysis were compiled into a rehabilitation plan for the building. In 2016, Clemson University began the project, returning the auditorium to a vibrant space that's used Monday through Friday for classrooms by all different departments. The positive response of the Clemson students, faculty, and alumni has inspired the administration to plan more rehabilitation projects on other notable campus buildings. The success of the project can be attributed to the diligent research conducted by William Hyatt and restoration and construction led by Preservation South and First Class Construction. Accepting the award today are Mr. Will Hyatt of Clemson University Historic Properties, Mr. Jeff Cutliffe of First Class Construction, and Mr. Kyle Campbell of Preservation South. Come forward, gentlemen. Our next recipient of an honor award is another one here in Columbia, and it's one I'm particularly proud of. Um, it goes to the Palmetto Compress. It was constructed between 1917 and 1923 by the Palmetto Compress and Warehouse Company. The building is a rare surviving example of a cotton compress facility and one of the largest cotton warehouses in the state. It is significant for its role in the growth of the textile industry and as an excellent example of warehouse design and construction from the early 20th century. The rehabilitation project focused on preserving the original warehouse form while introducing apartment and retail uses, use of the original materials and innovative design solutions in addition to the careful attention of restoring window and door openings helped retain the building's industrial character. The rehabilitation of the Palmetto Compress helps anchor a transforming district between downtown Columbia and the riverfront. It was made possible through the efforts of PMC Property Group, Garvin Design Group, and Triangle Construction Company. Accepting the award are Mr. Daniel Rothschild of PMC Property Group, Mr. Scott Garvin of Garvin Design Group, and Mr. Tom Bayer of Triangle Construction. Gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yes, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, sir. congratulations. Our fifth uh, honor award this year is another one I have to confess is particularly um, exciting for me, and it's the Wilkins Mansion in Greenville. The Wilkins Mansion is an excellent and rare example of a high-style Italianate residence. It was constructed in 1878 for Greenville businessman William T. Wilkins and his wife Harriet Dawkins Cleveland Wilkins. When threatened with demolition in 2013, a group of concerned citizens worked to raise funds to relocate the building. In 2014, after removing non-historic additions, the 750 tons